recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. We just described Ric Flair as the end of the whole man <laughs> and player of the apes. <laughs> Carmella. That would irritate the hell out of me. I'm like, I just want my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> my ice cream is melting. <laughs> Ben. ben. Four halogens in that list? <laughs> it was oh my god. You're like, it's not the halogens. I'm like, no, Ben, no. Those <laughs> damn halogens got me again. Aaron. I haven't started cooking more, but I have started thinking about cooking more, so I've looked at a lot of recipes for things. Mostly mostly cocktails. Zakia. I'm a very happy evil genius. Yeah. And Nick. For all the listeners out there, if you spend enough money, you can be where I am today. <laughs> and the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan and I am here today with Aaron Barkley. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Jonathan. I am here with Zakia Mendoza. Hello, Zakia. Hello, Jonathan. <laughs> well, I feel musically um, introduced. Thank you so much. <laughs> Aaron, based on what Zakia is wearing right now, how cold would you have imagined that it was in Michigan? 45 degrees. 40, yeah, I had her at a solid 40 degrees as well. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> she looks like she is bundled up and ready for the winter. She looks super cozy, though. Absolutely. Zakia, what's the reality? So let me say I am not standing outside. But if I were standing outside, it would be 75 degrees. I am just uh, a little lizard. I run a little cold-blooded. So sometimes after I like you eat, I need to have something warm. Like and sometimes it's it's my little bundly thing. It'll it'll come off. We'll be fine. <laughs> is it warmer or colder inside than it is outside? Cooler. It's cooler. Okay, inside. so you're actually colder than 75 because you're inside. Yes. Mm. We're learning things today, folks. Uh, we're going to have a great game today. I want to introduce our guests. First up, Lisa Wolfish is with us today. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Glad you're here. Thank you. Absolutely. Andrew Skinner is with us today. Hello, Andrew. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. All right. I want to get to know both of you a little bit better. Lisa, let's start with you. Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. So I am in Washington, D.C., and I am living the dream, researching and writing about emerging technology, anything from AI and biometrics, quantum computing, all sorts of fun topics like that. And I look at ways that those kinds of technologies can be adopted within government. Something fun about myself uh, for something I don't think I've mentioned before, something for the math geeks out there. When I was in college, I worked at a place that was two rooms in a community center filled with all sorts of mathematical models of platonic solids and uh, all sorts of puzzles and things like that. And we ran workshops for uh, elementary school kids on all sorts of fun topics like that, tessellations, periscopes, that sort of thing. And those two rooms and those models grew into the math museum in New York City that's currently on Fifth Avenue. Oh, Get out so of here. Yeah. So it was a fun little thing. And when I went there uh, several years ago, they actually have a plaque on the wall from the original two rooms that we used to work out of. And how big is the museum now? Several floors. It's they wow. they moved to yeah they moved to a new building and it's all corporately funded now and and whatnot. So it it just it had these this modest little starting from and all the models were built by a math teacher. And when he retired, they didn't want to get rid of them, so they put them in these two rooms in this community center, and it, it grew into a, a place where we had these fun workshops 
you know, when that was going to close down, they got this corporate sponsorship for this whole big, you know, National Museum of Mathematics. Uh, it's called MoMath is how it's abbreviated. MoMath, that's and a great it was, name. Yeah, and it was just the the best the best job in college ever that I could have had. I love that. I'm not even a math person, and I bet I would enjoy visiting MoMath. It's it yeah. It was it was really fun. Oh, well, that's a great story, Lisa. We're so glad you're here. Thanks. All right, Andrew, you're up. Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Good morning. I also live in the D.C. area. I uh, work at the Library Congress as a section chief and IT program manager. So I uh, help manage modernization projects uh, and some O&M for a service unit within the library. Uh, something fun about myself. I think the best I've got today, is, based on Zakia's garb, is that uh, my wife will also dress like that inside, uh, even if the AC is set at like 74 we are in a temperature different relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely warm and she is not. She calls me her heater in bed. So there we go. I love that. <laughs> uh, th this morning, Sarah and I took a walk and then I was telling her my back hurt. She was like, well, do you want me to push on it? I was like, sure. She pushed on it for a little bit. She's like, you do an impressive job of generating heat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was an oddly worded compliment. That didn't sound like a good thing. If if you've ever seen the Saturday Night Live video sketch of Big Boys uh, from a couple winters ago, mm -hmm. Mary, my wife, took a very big liking to that one. You should check yeah. it out. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that one. All right, guys, we are going to have a fantastic time today. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to get started right now with Warm It Up Chris. It's time to warm it up on Trivial Warfare today. And there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA. And that's Chris. And sometimes Jonathan. And Aaron is playing the part of Chris. So I was traveling last month, and one thing I noticed was there were a shocking number of American fast food places in, in Georgia. They had McDonald's and Burger Kings. They also had Falafel King, which was delightful. They had Baskin Robbins. They had Falafel Subway. King. Falafel King. Same same logo, like absolutely trademark infringement, but, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. So I, I got to thinking about you know, the, the number one American export of McDonald's and which countries were the first to lean into the Big Mac. So obviously the United States was the first country to have McDonald's. I have here the list of the next 20 countries and territories to open a McDonald's restaurant. And you are going to tell me what they are. Cool. The ne cool. So you mean like after they started, which ones were the first to expand <clears throat> or the next ones coming? I don't understand the question. Are you asking about something that happened in the past with the original expansion into other countries or something that's yes. going to happen in the future to new countries? Oh, no. Countries like, yeah, no. Countries that already have them. Gotcha. Okay. The ones that jumped on the bandwagon first. So U.S. is number one. Lisa, what else is in the top 21? Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be in the top 20, but I've been to McDonald's in Australia, so I'm going to say Australia. Australia is... No, no, I didn't turn. Oh, ha. Australia's number six on the list. Yay. Hooray. Andrew. I'm going to go with Japan. Japan is not in. Nope. Japan is number eight. Yay. So Yay. it's a good sign when she says not. Because <laughs> then it's yeah. going to be in the top ten. Yeah, because apparently she can't read. Zakia. I feel like I should just go with my neighbor down like, you know, half an hour and say Canada. Canada's number two. They jumped on the trend real quick. <laughs> Jonathan. I was going to happily say Canada. Uh, <laughs> I will now happily say the UK. UK is number 17. Yeesh. Yeah. So we are four for four. Lisa, let's keep this train rolling. Uh, so I'll say based on my movie knowledge of Pulp Fiction, I will say France. <laughs> Good call. France is number 12. The Royale Witchies. <laughs> Andrew. I'm going to take a swing, and I remember it being a big deal. I think it's China. China is not in the top 21. Okay. And since I closed the tab with... Oh, no, there it is. China is... 
48th. Their first one opened on October 8th, 1990. Oh, and wow. now they so have 48 was 1990. Yeah. And now they currently have over 4,000 locations. So are they the second biggest? You might not know. I can resort this list and find out. Yep. United States has 13,682. China has 4,978. Japan has 2,900. And now I'm going to stop reading that list. Hmm? America's goal. We didn't know it before, but you know it now. Our goal is to fatten up every country in the world. We are. We're working on it. Zakia. Since I'm just going with a neighbor theme, let's try Mexico. <laughs> Mexico is not in the top 21. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. They don't, they don't need that down there. It's not in the top five. It is. It is number 40. Oh, wow. Yep, 1985. 402 locations currently. The Fiesta with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan. I'm going to guess. All right. This is probably stupid, but I know Mexico. I don't know Mexico. I know McDonald's gets a lot of its beef from Brazil. Uh, I'm going to guess Brazil. Brazil is not in the top 20, but I just scrolled past them. They are number 25, so you were close. So close. For, uh, first one opened February of 1979. We got all the obvious ones in the first round, huh? Yep. Okay. Lisa, we're back to you. Okay, I'll stick uh, with where Americans travel in Europe, and I'll try Italy. Italy is number mm, 36. So, Nope. But that is hey, a, we are, oh, I thought Italy was going to be in there. Yeah. Uh, their first one opened in 1985. That was a good year. Andrew. <laughs> I'm actually going to go less with the where Americans travel and where we have a large military presence. Uh, early on, we had a ton of military bases in Germany. Mm. Germany, number 11 on the list. I will remind you guys that this is countries and territories that have McDonald's's. So see what y'all do with that information, Zakia. <laughs> well, I was going to pivot from McDonald's I've been to, and I was going to say Italy. But now that you mentioned territories, is it possible that there's a McDonald's in Puerto Rico? There are many McDonald's in Puerto Rico. There are, in fact, 108. It is number three on the list. They followed oh. right behind Canada. Yeah. Yeah. The Boricua Burger. (laughs) Jonathan. I didn't see one while I was there, but that doesn't mean it wasn't there. I'm going to say the Bahamas. Bahamas, number 19. Woo! Mm -hmm. Location. Put them where it's easier to get the supplies to. (laughs) Yeah. Lisa. Jonathan took mine. Yay! I mean, oh, sorry. (laughs) Uh, I'll try Ireland. Ireland is number 22 on the list, so just outside of the parameters. Sorry. Andrew? Uh, You said territories. How about Guam? Guam is number seven on the list. Zakia? Ah, So I'm caught between two places. One is like a known U.S. territory, and one is a place where I saw a KFC. So if they have a KFC, they might have a McDonald's. And I'm, I'm going to play with the risky one, the KFC one, and I'm going to say Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica, if it is on the list, that is not in the top 21. And I've hidden my tab again, so I can't find it. Sorry. Darn. It's okay. <laughs> Jonathan. I'm going to guess American Samoa. American Samoa is not on the list in the oh, top well. 21 spots. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, we can go around one more time. You got a couple more left. Lisa. I'll ride the territory train and try the U.S. Virgin Islands. U.S. Virgin Islands, number four. Yep. <laughs> Andrew? How about Spain? Just why not? <laughs> why not? Um, why not? Because it's not in the top 20. That's why not. There you go. It is number 27. Close. You were close, yeah. I found my tab, by the way. Okay. Zakia. I'm just going to get wild. I know that <laughs> in this country, they have, like, specific McDonald's items. I'm just going to say India. <laughs> India is not in the top 20. Mm. It's not in the top 50. They, they have a lot of religious 
standards around not damaging cows, I think. Mm -hmm. So perhaps burger restaurants don't go over well. Number 87 opened October 13th, 1996. So they have like a lot of special items in uh, India. They have like the McPaneer and like a uh, pizza McPuff in like very specific India <laughs> yeah. like, items. But yeah, that was my thought. Okay. And Jonathan, we are back to you. Bring us home. You know what? If Germany was the right answer, I'm going to go with Austria. Austria is not in the top 21. Well, that's a shame. It is a shame. Sorry. The ones you missed, um, Austria's 23, by the way. So also very so close. close. Were the Netherlands Ooh. or Denmark in there? Those were the next ones to come. Netherlands is number nine. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so at number five, Costa Rica. Okay. At num- at 10th, 10th uh, in time, Panama. Panama! Thir- <laughs> <laughs> you got to 13th in time was El Salvador, followed by Sweden, Guatemala, Guatemala, Curaçao, Hong Kong, New Zealand, and rounding out the top 21 was Switzerland. Okay, okay. so you mean to tell me that Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Guatemala had it before Mexico? That is wild. Yeah. That is That's, crazy. It's a wild and crazy country. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like some kind of legal thing. Yeah, I'm maybe. sure it was. Yeah. All right. Well, that is Warm It Up, Chris. Thank you very much, Aaron. We have been yeah. educated, I think, about McDonald's expansions. <laughs> very important. Yeah, it is truly important. We need to know where we can get a, a bad McDonald's hamburger when we're traveling, for sure. Uh, unless you're sponsoring us, McDonald's, in which case, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> That's great. All right, guys. We are going to have a great time today. It's going to be episode number 488. That means we are on the main feed. And that means that you all are all getting to listen to this one for free. If you want more Trivial Warfare, you can get a lot more Trivial Warfare. Just go to TrivialWarfareArmy.com, sign up as a sergeant or higher, and you will get access to our entire backlog of awesome episodes going all the way back to 2015 uh there are some bangers in there and i think you'll enjoy them so go to trivialwarfarearmy.com and sign up as a sergeant or higher today's game it's going to be andrew and zakia versus jonathan and lisa aaron's hosting and it's time to play the game play us oh yeah y'all know what time it is this is mr literature himself cordially inviting you to the game this is six rounds of trivia goodness three questions per round every right answer gets you 10 points in the middle we'll take a pause for the cause and ask a midpoint question worth up to 20 juicy points after round six you can wager any or all those points you've been building up and take a shot at the final round it's a series of theme based questions we call the gauntlet it's just that easy, baby. But this game ain't gonna play itself, players. Let's get it on. We are going to start off with the obligatory hockey question. <laughs> Okie dokie, Smokey. <laughs> get it out of the way. With the Florida Panthers Game 7 win in the Stanley Cup Final this year, a man with the last name of Rodriguez, not Hanson nor Rachel Wood, will cause what other name to be engraved on the cup for the first time? Oh, I got it. Works for me. Yeah, let's. We can lock for sure. Yeah. Okay, they are locked. All right, Lisa. I suggested Evan because Evan Hansen and Evan Rachel Wood, I believe. That's the one that was weird for me. Evan Rachel Wood. What's that? Uh, the actress isn't she in West? Is her first in name Evan? I think. I think so. I think so. I have no knowledge of that. And that's. You know, like I said before, if I can't get in it through a movie, you know, I might not know it. So that's that's my only in on that, not being a hockey fan. Okay. I like the Evan Hansen angle. I was wondering if it could be related to the Hansen brothers from Slapshot. But I like the Evan Hansen angle better. I don't know anything about Rachel Wood having that name attached, but I'm good to go with you. 
Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I would I would lock that in. All right, we're gonna say Evan. Not Hanson, as in the uh, Hanson brothers responsible for the late 1990s Bob Mop. <laughs> That's the Hanson, I would assume. Oh, anyway, gosh, Andrew yeah, and Zakia. No. <laughs> What'd you guys say? The musicals and Evan Rachel Wood is an actress that does sing. She was in Westworld. She was in Across the Universe. And there's Dear Evan Hansen. I don't know much about hockey, but I do know Evans. So <laughs> we locked in with Evan. <laughs> All right. I didn't I didn't know that she was a singer, but she is in Westworld and her first name is Evan, just like Evan Rodriguez, which is the first Evan that will be on the Stanley Cup. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it's it. It's crazy. There's a ton, a ton of names on that thing. There's like four extra rings in the Hockey Hall of Fame and I mean, I'm sure it's a lot of, like, jocks and geese and stuff. <laughs> Apparently, Canadians don't like the name Evan. Who knew? Yeah. All right. Question two, category is health and wellness. In 2023, Surgeon General Vivek Murthy published a public health advisory linking use of what to poor mental health in teenagers. In June of 2024, he wrote in the New York Times that this thing should come with a warning label, similar to how we label cigarettes. Oh. Yeah, I think I know this. If you want to lock in, I'll I'll, I'll yes, ride your coattails. We, we can lock that in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I remember hearing a, re- a report about this. <clears throat> it's uh, social media, I think, Zakia. Is that specific enough, Aaron? Yes, that is specific enough. I am good with it, and I am inclined to agree with Dr. Murthy on here. So <laughs> 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 we can lock it in. Okay. Jonathan was coattailing off Elisa. Lisa, what do you have to say? Yeah, we locked in social media. Um, I also remember the reports and remembering, I remember saying, yeah, that kind of sounds, that sounds good. And wondering, you know, being in IT, wondering how they're going to implement it, right? Going right to implementation. So uh, (laughs) yeah, I, yeah, we locked in social media as well. Every time you open Instagram, you have to click, I agree that this may be bad for me. It'll be great. It is social media. I'm okay with this rotting my brain. Click yes. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is social media. I would submit it is uh, a cause of poor mental health for everybody, not just teenagers, but their brains aren't done cooking yet. So we got to look after them. Hooray. Number three category is <laughs> video games. Hooray. Hooray. Hooray for correct answers, not for rotting teenage brains. That's what I thought. Oh. It sounded like you were saying hooray for looking after uncooked brains. Well, yeah, also that. Brains. <laughs> Zombies. <laughs> okay. Okay. Number three category is video games. Steam players are going ape over what clicking game, which peaked at 858,915 concurrent players in early June of 2024, making it the 11th most popular game on the platform. Unlike Baldur's Gate 3, which holds the 10th spot, players don't waste time monkeying around with quests. They just click on the titular object. (laughs) Aaron, do you want the name of the game, the name of the object, or are they the same? It is the titular object, so they are the same. Beautiful. <laughs> ah, yeah. Brain sinking. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> I think we can lock with that, maybe? Sure. I, I'm uh, into it. Yeah. Locked in. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, Lisa, Lisa, I'm I'm noting, I, even before she... Got to the monkeying part. She, they're going ape over what clicking game? Like, okay, that's a clue. Uh, so she had ape and she had monkey in the question. You're clicking an object. Uh, maybe it's banana. Is it some adjective banana? Some I could not help I, with that. I, I, yeah, I did I ask. Know. I did ask the question. She said they are the same, so I wouldn't add anything to it. Yeah, I'm happy to go with that because I have no. I have no idea otherwise. Okay, then we're going to say banana. Okay. Zakia, what song are you singing right now? This beep is bananas. B A N A N A S. Beep is bananas. B A N A N A S. And I was also about to type that to uh, Andrew. This little poop emoji is bananas. There you go. Just for posterity. Uh, <laughs> but we had no idea. 
You're like, oh, yeah, like, the, I picked up on the, like, monkey primate things. And I'm like, well, it can't be guerrilla warfare since of the t- titular objects. So let's say banana. And Andrew had the same thought at the same time. So we said banana. banana. Right answer for the right reasons. Points all around. <laughs> So I assume there's some level of complexity to the banana game. Nope. There's Does not. the banana hide it. or dance no. or move around? Nope. nope. It just sits there and you click on it. I don't quite understand how it works, but it's something to do with like it changes and you can use it to, if you click enough, you get like steam points or something. I don't know. It's just, but it's a banana and you click the banana and the, the number goes up when you click the banana. The number is the number of times you've clicked the banana. I prefer peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly. Okay. It's it's now the fourth most popular game on stream, apparently. Oh wow! And there's there's a YouTube video. I, I just want to see. Ah, no, I don't want to build my online business. Shut up with your ads. <laughs> okay, literally, it's just clicking. Yeah, told you. Yeah, it's just clicking, and you're trying to get fancy bananas, that, so that you're clicking on fancy bananas, apparently. So what data are they actually collecting? I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> but the, I think there's a monetization. I think you I think you can like buy fancy bananas kind of thing. I'm with Lisa. There's some eye tracking thing that they're trying to like train here. <laughs> there's some experiment they're trying to pick out who's got the better reflexes or <laughs> the tr- there's a there's a thing they're calling it a scam game. The truth about Steam's insane banana scam. Banana scams. Hey. Do, 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 banana <laughs> scam. Do, 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 do. <laughs> do they elaborate yeah. on what the scam is? I I don't want to watch the whole YouTube video. Oh, so it's a no, video. I, oh, yeah, I no, passed. Okay. Well, this is I, I asked this question on Tuesday of this week, and it is now Saturday. So this whole thing has blown up since then. It's blown up even bigger. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Moving on, if I may, to round two. Y'all are perfect through round one. Round two, question one, is in sports. Sports. Knoxville is home to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, which features, among other things, much about what NCAA coach, a Tennessee native who, at the time of her retirement in 2012, was the winningest Division I basketball coach in history. She now sits at number five with 1,098 wins. I feel strongly about that, Lisa. All right, we're going to lock in. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is her first name Pat Andrew? It's Patricia, yeah. Okay, because I was thinking Patty, Pat, Patty is coming to mind, not Patty Murray. She's ab- absolutely a senator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw her face in my head before the name came to me. So when you said Patty, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, and when you said Summit, I'm like, yep, that's the name, that's the name. So, want to lock in Done. Pat Summit? Okay, Lisa and Jonathan. There are two huge names in my mind in the pantheon of women's college basketball. For me, it's Pat Summit, number one, and Gino Ariema number two. Pat Summit was a coach of the Lady Vols for years and years and years. We said Pat Summit. When I ran this question live, some team wrote Pat Dunbar, and I was curious as to who that was. That's not anyone. That's just a name they made up. But I did end up on the LinkedIn profile of someone named Pat Dunbar, so now they're going to see that I looked at them, and it's, I hope, going to confuse them a little bit. But your answer is Pat Summit. Woo! Shout out to Pat Dunbar! (laughs) (laughs) And Pat Dunbar, if you're listening, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm not. Thank you for listening. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry for freaking you out. I'm not sorry for listening. Uh, Round two, question two category is art. Originally designed to be part of the gates of hell, a standalone sculpture called Eve by what artists resides at the Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park in Grand Rapids, just over 4,000 miles from where the sculptor was born. Yeah, this has got to be used the key. It's in Michigan. (laughs) (laughs) Like, if I'm being honest... Like my own, my serious answer is the only thing that's going to no, come to mind. Yeah, I, so I, I I'm okay with locking it, it in. Oh, okay. I will need answers fairly soon. So we'll we will lock in with. No. Ah, don't give the answer. <laughs> I, oh, I'm not. I'm just typing it. Yes. So Aaron knows. Yes. Okay. I got, got it. it. 
I forgot Aaron was on this chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are locked in. Jonathan and Lisa. Yep, they're locked in. You got about 30 seconds to talk it out. So, yeah, the series piece, The Gates of Hell isn't a series either. It's just a sculpture. And so apparently this other sculpture was originally going to be part of it. I've answered a question correctly on accident once about The Gates of Hell, where that was the <laughs> answer. And I had no idea that was the answer. It was just what came into my head. Your first guess was Rodan. I like that. Uh, the The most prolific sculpture is a sculptor is Bernini. I don't think this is Bernini. I wouldn't be shocked if it's a B word, but I like Rodin. Yeah, I was just throwing out names of sculptors who would be, you know, over the Atlantic, which would be about that way mm -hmm. headed east. I'm fine going with that just uh, by way of picking uh, someone who at least I know does sculpture. Absolutely. All right, let's say we're Dan. All right. Or Rodin. Whatever you are. <laughs> not Rodin, like, ah! Not that Rodin, the other one. <laughs> Zakia didn't like my answers of Meyer, since Meyer is big in Michigan, or Meyer Angelo. <laughs> so we went with her actual knowledge. I mean, I wouldn't call it actual knowledge. I've been, I've been to the Frederick Meyer sculpture garden and park it is beautiful and a lot of the sculpture there are very like modern and large scale so i had the idea that maybe this is dale chifuli but the four thousand miles like he's from seattle and i don't know if that's far enough but it's far away and his type of art kind of fits in of what i've seen at the meyer gardens so we went with chifuli According to Google Maps, Seattle is 2,098 miles from Grand Rapids. The Gates of Hell is, it is a sculpture, it is a giant thing, but many, many pieces of the figures on Gates of Hell are displayed independently as their own sculptures. The most famous one from the Gates of Hell is a little thing called the Thinker, mm -hmm. which, like Eve, is by Auguste Rodin. Oh! That's I, that really feels interesting good. to know. That was good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I knew You're I knew that there were multiple versions of the thinker done. There's one in the Vatican that I've seen and I'm like, well, this isn't a damn replica. This is in the Vatican. So, okay, this is <laughs> real. But I know that there's been another one that travels. So I knew that. Wildy wild. There is a Rodan thinker at the Detroit Institute of Arts. <laughs> I'm all the way on that one. <laughs> Round two, question three category is the law one. In tabletop gaming, what is the name of the game pieces that usually have style a stylized human form? It turns out the publisher of the game Carcassonne, who coined the term, have had a trademark on the word since 2019. <laughs> I feel confident. Uh, we're going to lock in. So, Andrew, I am not a tabletop gamer, and this is why the re like I say I'm not an actual nerd. I don't have nerd cred, is because I don't really tabletop game. However, I've heard of Carcassonne. Yeah. I do not know what this is. Chris would be so proud of me. <laughs> I I don't play tabletop games either. I can tell you about a lot about actual Carcassonne. Like the little the place in France, it's like a like a walled <laughs> like city, and like it, it got its name from the queen that sun the bell, like rang the bells. But like, dude, I I can't tell you anything about actual things except for if they're human form, are they is it something Frenchy like um or hominids or. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm fine with hominids. That's you, you, humanoids, whatever. That sounds more space tech stuff. So maybe hominids would be better. Sure. I, I, I got nothing. I got a big bag of nothing over here. Oh, my goodness. It's starting. I'm going to say <laughs> hominids and let it go. So not wasting too much time. Okay. Jonathan, you had a big bag of something. You had meow meows on this. I did have a big bag of something. In fact, after this recording, I'm taking Sebastian over to our mutual friend Chris's house for a game afternoon that is also a surprise party for my brother Bob for his 50th birthday. Yeah. 
Happy birthday, Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. You didn't know that that was happening, but now at the time of this, <laughs> at the time of the release of this recording, this will have already happened. Yeah, and we're going to be playing with a lot of meeples. You will be playing with a lot of meeples, but don't call them that because uh, what the publisher's like Hans Umglick or something, and I don't know how to. Yeah, Hans Umglick. Um, I don't know. It's German, but they will sue your pants off if you call them meeples because they hold a trademark on that word. Of hey, meeples are meeples. Germans Why should it be? We France. would get along so awfully. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> After two rounds, Jonathan and Lisa remain perfect. Andrew and Zakia have 40, so plenty of time to catch up. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, huh, sorry. One of my questions didn't port over. Uh, the entirety of round three, the category is the 1999 classic film Drop Dead Gorgeous. Okay. Oh, um, I'm hoping <laughs> God, you've seen, seen this, forever. Lisa, because you know I haven't. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Number one, the beauty pageant in Drop Dead Gorgeous was sponsored by a company that was a fictionalized version of what real-world multi-level marketer? Founded in 1963 and named for its founder, today it operates manufacturing plants in Texas and China. I love this movie. It is a delightful movie. Oh, is that it? I think so. I love it. I think so. It's like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Let's do it. Okay, we'll lock in. Oh, Andrew, you sparked the sparky spark. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. So- <laughs> Andrew, don't spark the sparky spark. We never spark the sparky spark. <laughs> you spark yeah. the sparky spark. Okay. I was a Boy Scout. I know how to start fires. <laughs> <laughs> Ignition. All right. So at first I was thinking, oh, Amway, like because I, I I was still still in Grand Rapids for some reason. But and then you're like, oh wait, wait, makeup company like Avon, I'm like ah ah ah, makeup company MLM name for a founder. This has to be Mary Kay. That's the one. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lock in. This is Mary Kay. And then that, that yeah, that makes sense with the movie too. So. Jonathan and Lisa. Uh, yeah, so so I was thinking Avon for then I was thinking Merle Norman, but no, they had stores, so it wouldn't be them. And then I'm like, oh wait, it's the pink Cadillacs. It's the one where the the salespeople got the pink Cadillacs. And and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and we then also locked in with Mary Kay. The pink Cadillacs, I learned when I was researching this question. Um Mary Kay had the exclusive right to sell the pink Cadillacs. Cadillac couldn't sell any other pink cars in that particular color to anybody else, even if they asked. And your answer is Mary Kay Cosmetics. Woo! It's a pink Cadillac moving down the street. How much do they have to pay for the right to sing about a pink Cadillac? If it's, if it's like, uh, how is that? How did that work? So Aretha Franklin is from Detroit, so it was free. (laughs) (laughs) Is Mary Kay from Detroit? No. Cadillac is. <laughs> Why would she sing about a Mary Kay car? Because it's only a Mary Kay car. So it was just the specific shade of pink. There was a specific light pink. I think you might have been able to get like a magenta or whatever, but like this pastel baby pink. It was. It's like a different color every couple years that was specifically Mary Kay was the only people that could buy those color cars. I don't know. Licensing Which is Which do weird. you think came first? The song or the, the meal deal? Whatever you call it. The meal deal. The what? The, there is the no way agreement. To know. Are you I'm still back it up, on the McDonald's, McDonald's thing, Jonathan? <laughs> you still yeah, thinking, of course I'm thinking about getting a McDonald's. McDonald's meal deal? Ooh. In 1967, Mary Kay Ash ordered her first pink Cadillac, her first pink Cadillac Coupe de Ville from a Dallas dealership, and had it painted to match the pale pink lip and eye palette she carried in her purse. So the pink Cadillac from Mary Kay was probably came out before the song. The song was in the eighties for sure. So mm-hmm. we got one riding on the freeway and a love in a pink Cadillac. All right, okay, we're good. That's a, we're good. Di- that's a different song. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm thinking Aretha Franklin. I guess yeah, it's no, another it's a Bruce pink- Springsteen. It's a Springsteen song. Also, I guess in the eighties. Mary the song is about a boy who is afraid of his girlfriend going to college and having sex with other guys, and the pink Cadillac is a metaphor. 
Yeah, exactly. Ah, wow. no, I didn't know that. That is fantastic. <laughs> and just by way of coincidence, I have a Springsteen quote on my shirt right now, but it's what? not from it's not from Pink Cadillac. Oh. There was also a 1989 film with Clint Eastwood. Yes, I knew about that. Somebody found the Wikipedia disambiguation page. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently it was a B-side of Dancing in the Dark. Oh, that's a <laughs> good that single. Know what a B-side is. All right, round three, question two. Your category is still the 1999 classic film Drop Dead Gorgeous. What journalist was a member of Nixon's White House? staff before she anchored major programs on ABC and CBS. She was the first woman correspondent on 60 Minutes and also was one of six people who received a public denial from Bob Woodward after allegations that she was deep throat. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to lock it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Lisa, you're better at political related things than I am. I threw out Barbara Walters to start with. Because of age, mostly, and, and profile. Yeah. I, something, something is just pulling a string with me that Diane Sawyer worked for Nixon. And so that's and what. So she's I'm, old enough, you think? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. go with you. I, you yeah. probably know better than I do. I, yeah, I don't think Barbara Walters ever worked for, for CBS. So I, yeah, I would go with Diane Sawyer. Okay, we're going to say so. Diane Sawyer. Or we're just going to say Sawyer in case it's Tom. <laughs> Gotta be safe. Uh, Zakia and Andrew, you guys had this pretty Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Zakia and Andrew, you guys had this pretty quick. My Zakia mind is, had it. Perfect. Because my mind is not for rent. Um, <laughs> the tie in is one of the girls, and I believe it's Kirsten Dunst in this movie, who really, really wants to be Diane Sawyer when she gets older. That's her hero. So we said Diane Sawyer. Yep, it's a it's a whole bit in the movie, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and spoil a movie that's old enough to rent a car. It's old enough to rent a, old enough to rent a pink Cadillac. Uh, at the end of the movie, she 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 grabs the microphone from someone who gets shot and becomes Diane Sawyer and they all live happily ever after Yeah, uh, because all she wanted was to be just like Diane Sawyer. Wow. Good job, Lisa. All right. Round three, question three, the 1999 classic film dropped dead gorgeous fill in the blank to complete a statement made by director Michael Yan about the benefits of casting the movie with local Minnesota actors quote, almost every, uh, every actress in Hollywood had these very manicured blank so one of the things was just going and finding girls who had authentic Midwestern blank. I think we're going to, are you okay with locking that in? Yeah. <laughs> I, Lisa, when I think of Midwestern people who have a Midwestern blank, the Midwestern blank, the next word is always an accent. Yeah. Don't you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I, sent that at the same time. I think you did because I just keep thinking of Fargo and, and the Minnesota accents and the, and the, the Midwest accents, and they're probably hard to get right. So if you want accents, cast local. Okay. We're okay. going to go accents. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very, very hard to get right as we're learning in real time. Uh, <laughs> <Zikia> and <Andrew. laughs> yeah. I would actually just, when I was younger, I may have had a crush on Kirstie Alley. And I said in our chat that her accent was great in the movie before the question was asked. So we went with accent. And by the way, if you want to hear an authentic Midwestern accent, you're always hearing one here. Mine. <laughs> oh, I, I hear mine all the time. Like <laughs> all the time. And some people like can't hear it at all. But, you know, like, yeah, all the Check time. Check now that I'm Charlie listening Barron's for it, I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you say time, like time. Mm-hmm. All mm -hmm. the time. And, and my and my O's can get a little weird. I really turned it up there, but <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> anything with a double O coming out of my mouth is strange. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, during the Stanley Cup final, I was watching a lot of coverage of Leon Dreisaitl, who's German but lives in Edmonton. And it, it makes sense that he would speak English with a Canadian accent, but he does. Not a German accent, a Canadian accent. He says sorry. <laughs> Just wild to me. So this is 10 points to Orange Cat. And what I had hoped to do Darn. was move you guys 
away from accents because you don't have manicured accents. But in 1999, everyone did have very, very manicured eyebrows. I don't think there's I a Midwestern like eyebrow. Mm hmm. Bushy Midwestern mm-hmm. eyebrows. Because, you know, everyone had like super thin, itty bitty eyebrows in the late 90s. So they cast Denise Richards in that. She's got like, she's uh, got big eyebrows, but she's from LA. Maybe the. And Kirstie Alley has been, had big eyebrows. I don't know. They found a couple exceptions, apparently, in LA and brought them over. Thing. Yeah, I think, the whole thing. I think Andrew heard me say, I don't know. <laughs> got a little bit of a laugh. Uh, I get it at home sometimes since Mary's from Michigan and I pick mm. it up from her. <laughs> oh, that was 1999. I thought you said 89. Okay. No, 99. I was like, Denise okay. Richards, she would have been really young. <laughs> 99. So after three rounds, the scores are 80 to 60. This looks like a movie I should watch. Oh, it I see Allison, yes. I see Allison Janney in a picture there, like her. Oh, she's fantastic. Kirsten so Burks writing this here. Yeah, it was Amy Adams on screen de- or big big debut um, on screen debut. I, I read a lot about this movie when I was writing this round, and Allison Janney apparently will say that people will come up to her, and more people will come up to her and go, "Oh my God, I loved you and Drop Dead Gorgeous," than will say, "Oh my God, I loved you in The West Wing." Right? Yeah, because she's perfect. Like that movie yeah, is is possibly a perfect movie. Drunk and. Well, I yes. think I got my plans for tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm gonna send a message to Sarah so I can put this on our list. The midpoint. Uh, is going to be four before and after questions. I love, love, love writing these, and I find them to be very divisive. People kind of either love playing them or hate playing them, and I don't care. So <laughs> we're going to do that. Uh, for those of you who are new to the format, each these are not questions. They are statements. Each statement has two parts that are clues. You smoosh the clues together, and you get one not coherent but at least cohesive sentence. So, for example, a band – that existed at the time when life multiplied exponentially would be the Coheed and Cambrian explosion. (laughs) Cool. Those are all words. Yes. So band, and I mean, I'm making this up as I go, but like band would be Coheed and Cambria, Cambrian explosion. You just smoosh together. We good? We're good. All right. All right. I love you. I love the answers to before and ha- afters, but I hate figuring them out. But it's yeah. okay because I, I I love you and I love the answers. So we're we're good. Let's get well, it. Good. Okay. I'm also a big fan of this because they will make Nick feel bad about himself. <laughs> right. It's, a it's bonus. also a win. Uh, Jonathan, before you can say anything, um, I I know I know what you're going to say, and you'll know when I get there. But I decided to keep it anyway because it's that good. I didn't even so. know what I was going to say. How do you know what I'm going to say? Because I know what you're going to say. Just trust me. Number one, Kelly, Jesse, Lisa, and Miss Carrie Bliss all find themselves asking readers, "Ain't I a woman?" Two, although lengthy, the rarely used full title of a 1964 nuclear war adjacent film probably does not contain many of the words found in a 2000 song featuring Andre 3000 and the Morris Brown College Gospel Choir. Three, a Pennsylvania native with a net worth of $1.3 billion thanks to her successful music career has never launched an unfair or untrue political smear campaign like the one leveled against John Kerry in 2004. And number four, Blanche Rose, Dorothy, and Sophia go on spring break and end up appearing in one of over 300 films that were sold via late night infomercial from 1997 until 2011. (laughs) <laughs> okay all right gonna need answers okay well uh, i yep aaron our answers are in cool so with the first one let's we'll do the next ones and then come back to it so number two we think it's dr strange love or how i learned to stop worrying and love the bombs over baghdad the third one lisa believes is uh, Taylor Swift boat, which sounded good to me. The fourth one was an instigate uh, golden girls gone wild. And the first one, I feel like there's a big name that we're missing in here, but I think we're going to go with good morning. Miss bliss. Sojourner truth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lisa, do you have any, any thoughts on that before we finalize it? We don't have much time. I, I don't, I think we're just missing something. I'm missing in, a name. In, That's the best. Yeah, I we don't, we just don't have that one. Yep. Okay. Andrew and Zakia. 
Number one bungled us up too. So Sojourner Truth's real name is Isabella Bomfrey. So we were gonna go with Good Morning Miss Isabella Bomfrey. Like Miss like Isabella Blake. Bomfrey would be better. Uh, and maybe it's not Sojourner Truth, and maybe someone quoted her, and maybe Bell is in the title of something that you read. So if you're thinking about feminist literatures and Bell, we end up changing it and going with Saved by the Bell Jar. Yeah, to... Miss Bliss isn't in Saved by the Bell, though, so that was a hard part for me, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I said that, but it's the reader's thing that, No, I like, get it, yeah. Yeah. Two... We also went with Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bombs Over Baghdad. <laughs> um, three, Andrew got. Yeah, I, I find it funny that the DC people got the Carrie reference. <laughs> it was Taylor Swift book that we put. <laughs> yes. And four was an insta get for me too. Golden yeah. Bulls got along. So, yes, uh, Saved by the Bell Jar, Dr. Strangelove, and How I Learned to Stop Wearing and Love the Bombs of Her Baghdad, Taylor Swift Boat, and Girls Gone, or Golden Girls Gone Wild. Okay. I am double checking myself because I think I might have screwed you on this. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I, I am going to go ahead and uh, make a confession that I've never seen an episode of Saved by the Bell. So, I was looking on the Wikipedia page and I thought I saw that Miss Bliss was listed as a character, not a main character, but a character. So regardless, y'all both got this wrong. The, uh, the And Lisa, you said it, you almost said it immediately right away. The I, book Ain't I a Woman was written by Bell Hooks. Hooks. Oh, oh. Get there. That's the first thing I typed in was saved by the bell, but I put Brooks. And oh. I was like, oh, that's wrong. And then Jonathan got me down a different rabbit hole. So Yeah, well, I mean for me it couldn't be saved by the bell because the literally Good Morning Miss Bliss was a Disney Channel show. The contract mm-hmm. for Haley Mills was with Disney. When it moved over to the other channel, she dropped. And that's when it became a different show, Saved by the Bell. So that's for me, I felt like it couldn't be Saved by the Bell at all. But I but believe it is it is. Good Morning Miss Good Morning Miss Bliss was a was a prequel to Saved by the Bell. No. And it then was it, the original yes. show. It came first. Good Morning Miss Bliss was on the air before Saved by the Bell. That's they, what I said. That's what I thought I said. I know a prequel is something you record afterwards set before. Okay. Well, fine. That's then correct. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it but it came but it did, did come before in time yeah okay i thought in this the was same universe in the same yeah. zach morris's trash universe <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway sorry no no <laughs> points on that one because it was a bad question sorry number two was dr strange love or how i learned to stop worrying and love the bombs over baghdad which is Yay. fun to say i was like yeah didn't identified. know there was the choir in that one i was trying to make it fit with hey ah. Uh, or something mm-hmm. like that. I can't remember the choir. It's a vet. It's at the very end. Power music, electric revival. Power oh, music, that's right. electric revival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pennsylvania native. It actually feels kind of good to just downplay her music career to just successful. That is Taylor Swift boat. <laughs> and the final one, which upset a lot of my regulars because it implied things as golden girls gone wild. Blanche would love that. I was about yeah. to say, you know, Blanche was down at Panama City. <laughs> yeah. She would have so after the midpoint, Barb and Star and Vista Del Mar. <laughs> after the midpoint, Jonathan and Lisa have 95, and Joe and Zakia have 75. There we go. That sounds right. Hooray. Round four, question one category is literature. Literature. 16 years after his death, what author is getting another writing credit? An unfinished manuscript about a volcano was finished by James Patterson and is set to be a 2024 summer bestseller. Reviews have been mixed. It sounds like publishers were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Okay. Spot on. Let's lock it in. Yeah. I don't know about the volcano thing. But Patterson is like spy thriller kind of stuff and sometimes mystery, but I think spy thriller. 
And so the spy thriller guy who died around that time, in my mind, would be Tom Clancy. Um, yeah, the only thing, only angle I'm trying to think of is they didn't stop to think whether they should. So maybe this was an author who did not die with the greatest reputation or uh, had some kind of... Also Tom I Clancy. Know. Did he? I, 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 think I don't know. Depending on your political leanings... Uh, I, I know that people, there was some dislike for him towards the end, but I'm open to other ideas. Yeah, I'm happy to go with that because I'm not really thinking of anything uh, just off the top of my head based on that, if the, if the time frame fits. Let me ask you this. Is Clive Cussler dead? I do not know. Cussler feels like he'd be an even better fit than, than Clancy. Or, or who would write something with a volcano. Everybody. Yeah. Grisham or Crichton? When Crichton's uh, actually might oh, be the most likely oh, to do a I volcano. I like oh that's that's it. That's a that's a clue for Jurassic Park. Because of Jurassic Park. There yep. we go. That's, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad we didn't just go for it. That's no. awesome. We're gonna say Michael good, Crichton. Good thinking. Yeah. Zaki, you having some emotions over there? Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell us about him. One could say that. I mean, I was really enjoying my chatteroony with uh, Andrew. We're talking about Jeff Goldblum and how much we love him in this show on Disney Plus because we were talking about Jurassic Park and the author of Jurassic Park, Mr. Michael Crichton, who is so interesting. Not only was he like eight feet tall, but he was <laughs> his, <laughs> his books were about like things that he had studied in his uh, previous career. He was a, a scientist, so he brought that into his books. So that's why the volcano makes sense, and then the Jurassic Park thing. So we locked in with Michael Crichton. Very Shout early. out to Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, you guys, you found the hint eventually, and I, I was watching Zakia and Andrew's reaction when y'all finally did. It was Michael Crichton. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about Jurassic Park this morning too. I was I was reading this thread where somebody said about like what a great movie it is and it holds up and it's so fantastic and the the whole T Rex scene and how great that that scene is, which I think it is. I'm glad that uh, that we clued in on that. It is a great movie. As far as he he didn't he didn't die in disgrace or anything interesting like that, but he did testify in front of Congress that he wasn't sure that humans had anything to do with global warming, which is a weird stance for a scientist to take. But oh well, oh. I know. Round four, question two, category is snacks. Yum. <laughs> as of twenty twenty one, what country is responsible for sixty four percent of the world's hazelnut population? It is a member of NATO. Though its admission to the EU has been in the negotiation process since 2005. Got about 45 seconds. We're locked. All right, Jonathan, Lisa, got about 15 seconds to talk it out. Okay, Lisa, maybe this is somewhere close to Italy or Greece, like Cyprus or something like that. I mean, I don't know if Italy's in the EU or not. Yeah, I, I mean, the only when I think hazelnuts, I think Frangelico and Nutella, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And Ferrer Rocher. Yes, which are all Italian. I don't know that Italy's not in the EU, um, so areas around there, it, you know, could could be could be tied to the breakup of Yugoslavia, which is Croatia. near, which is near. Um, so yeah, so so I was thinking could be Croatia. Um, Need an answer? I, if you want to say Croatia, I'm fine yeah, with that. Yeah. All right, we'll say we'll say Croatia. Okay, Andrew and Zakia. Uh, my first answer was completely wrong because they just started trying to be in NATO and or uh, the European Union and are not in NATO, though. And that was the Ukraine. And then we went back and forth on some other countries. Zakia brought up Italy, but I know they're in the EU. And then I thought, OK, who can't get into the EU? And I thought Turkey because they're partially in Asia. So we kind of went with Turkey. OK, I, I don't know exactly what the reasoning is for their EU status to be pending, but they have been a member of NATO since 1952, and it is the country of Turkey. Wow. wow. Good job. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Round four. Question three category is space things. 
The Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff is known primarily as the location of the discovery of what celestial object in 1930. 35 years later, the observatory was designated a National Historic Landmark, and 41 years after that, the object in question was back in the news. Meow meows. Yep. Meow. Right. So I'm fine with it. We're locked in. And Andrew. Oh, so you're lo- wait, you're locked in? Zakia said she had meow meows, and so I'm going to go with oh, whatever. Meow 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 meow. I did not. I thought oh. you did. I I'm did. Sorry. Oh, oh, meow meow. Oh. Sorry. What's the opposite of a meow meow? A woof woof. Oh, bark bark. Woof woof. Wow wow. Ooh. <laughs> Bow wow. <laughs> I yeah. Cause I do not have meow meows on this at all. So discovered as a. A celestial object in 1930. So 35 years after that would be 1965. Yeah. And then 41 years after 1965, it was back in the news. 41. So 2006. Celestial object in the news. Oh, Pluto? Yeah. When that was. uh, (laughs) That's when it got downgraded. (laughs) This might no be yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. I, I'm okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's lock Pluto. in with that. Pluto locked in. Jonathan and Lisa, y'all were confident. Yeah, it's it's Pluto. I did a you know a trip out there, and and it's really really a nice site to visit. And I went on you know all visited out all the kind of nerdy sites out in in Arizona. <laughs> that was one of them. And they have the old observatory, and they have a really interesting display of how they had a a contest or not a contest, but they took suggestions to name the planet and it's the Lowell observatory is a, that's the, the connection is to Pluto. And your answer is Pluto. Yay! Good job. Good job all around. So there was like a contest to name it. I thought they had to follow the pattern. Like, I mean, you got, you got your your gods. You hit Neptune, and then you got to go Pluto, right? I, I He's the other of the. I don't think that they took the suggestion, but I, there were a lot of letters <laughs> oh. that were written in on, "Hey, this is what we should call this." Okay, so that somebody put in there like Planet McPlanet Face or something like that. Back then, yeah, uh huh, yeah, absolutely. George McPlanet Face. That's, that's where it all started. That trend. Yeah. <laughs> So a bunch of the questions in this game are from that list that CNN released last week about the best cities to visit, the best small cities to visit in America. Richmond was number one, but we're full. Don't do it. You can go to any one of these lovely cities instead, like Grand Rapids or Flagstaff or some other cities that are going to come up later, especially if you're from D.C. Stay away. Sorry, D.C. folks. Y'all two are lovely. You can visit. I've been to Richmond. I was underwhelmed. Oh. Wow. I know. I thought that had hit you hard. I, I mean, were you here because before? I went to the Poe Museum there, and that was just <laughs> horrid. <laughs> it's not. It's not great. It's kind of. I don't know why we're so intent on laying claim to him. He's not from here. He didn't die here. He was born there. Was he born did, here? I think he was. He was either born there or lived there for a while in that hotel where they had. Maybe a he was spoon. born again there. Yeah, they had mm-hmm. a spoon there that might have served him from the hotel he lived in. <laughs> <laughs> so he as this. As the CNN article noted, we do have a complicated relationship with our history. So I think gra- we're kind of grasping at straws with Poe. Like, yeah, you there. We're going to talk about you a lot because you're not problematic. Ah, yeah. <laughs> he was a dropout of the University of Virginia. He was a mm-hmm. dropout at West Point. <laughs> he died in the ditch. <laughs> great. <laughs> but uh, the Ravens is a great team name. Yeah, it is. true. In yeah, for sure. Baltimore, <laughs> it does have a claim on him. So they have anyway, him. yeah. <laughs> museum. Underwhelming, I agree. I am keeping score by hand now because I've worked the spreadsheet. So I think, I think Jonathan and Lisa have 115 and Zaki and Andrew have 105. We're just trusting we, you. Yeah. yeah. And arguing yeah. with me. So we're going to. If anything, Lisa should do the math. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, this is just arithmetic. I'm now good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were 20 apart going into this, and um, Andrew and Zakia swept the round, and y'all missed one. So you're not 10 apart. Oh, then, then we're, they were 20 up. So honest. we're, yeah, no, another 10 up. 10 up. Oh, okay. Apparently, the arithmetic is hard for me, too. 
115. Okay. Round five, category one is geography. 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 This is about another city on that list. Like many other East Coast cities, Macon, Georgia is located on what geomorphological area between the coastal plain and Piedmont? Although the area Ah. itself is not always noticeable, a river that runs over this area will contain rapids and waterfalls. I like how both Jonathan and I had the same reaction. Like, it's going to be Piedmont. It's It's got to be Piedmont. Piedmont. (laughs) Everything down there is named Piedmont something. Not Piedmont. The Richmond satirical newspaper is called Piedmont, spelled P-E-E-D-M-O-N-T. Ah, that's pretty fun. Another great reason to visit Richmond. Yeah. Just don't. Come to the beer, save for the satirical newspaper. Anyway, answer the question. You want to go with that? You, oh, yeah, does Aaron need more specificity? I do not. All right. Hooray, then we're locked in. Okay. So I'm very familiar with Macon. I've driven through Macon a hundred times. I've stayed overnight in Macon multiple times. It is on I-75 in between um, Lake City, where 75 to go from Jacksonville to Atlanta. Most people will go west on I-10, take 75 from Lake City straight up. There's a bypass of Macon, 475, no 675 which is awesome, but it's a hilly area. There are some rock faces, and uh, that's really all I knew. I I would have said Piedmont, and Lisa had a nice idea. Yeah, I'm trying to think of of learned league leagues because they're <laughs> all named after these kinds of things. <laughs> So, so I'm going through, you know, Savannah, Cascades, uh, Cataracts. Um. Zakia has lost her mind. That might be the funniest thing she's ever heard. What is there? There's uh, Savannah. Glacier. Glacier. Uh, Mesa. Sure, desert. <laughs> so I think Cascades um. is probably the best answer we have. Uh, yeah, we talked about, you know, marshland and wetlands, but that doesn't seem to really fit. That's a little more east coast of Maryland. So, yeah, Cascade was all I could think of that had to okay. that that lent itself to rapids. And so mm-hmm. that's like, Jonathan, unless you have anything I'm else to you. pull. I say Cascade. No. All right. Andrew, you got to this one. Yeah. So, I mean, Zakia and I went back and forth. And I re- so the first time I ever went to pub trivia was in Augusta, Georgia in 1998. That was the first time I ever went to a trivia game and loved it. It was some English pub, too. They called it Quizzo Night. And they asked a question about this. And I couldn't think of anything but fault line back then and got the answer wrong. But I knew it was an F word. And I kept trying to remember and remember. And then it's the edge of the mountains where it falls off. And they have waterfalls, so we went with Fall Line. Is Augusta and Macon, and he, there was some other city, but I remembered Augusta for sure was that. So I went with that. So I will add on, Lisa. The reason why I was laughing so much at the Learn It League thing is because I'm in Corridor, and I I think this is the weirdest name, and I'm like, if bad. the answer is corridor i will never <laughs> stop laughing you will just like it, it will never end <laughs> i i am sure it's not patagonia either <laughs> <laughs> well i know I'm the cascades union. are a mountain range on the west coast yeah so who andrew when you were like it's something like fault line i'm like oh man if he doesn't get this he's gonna be so mad because it is fall line Nice. I didn't even know that was a name of a region or of an area. It's like, but that the... that does fit with what I experience in Macon. Like there are <laughs> hills that drop off quickly, just poof. Yep, and you you find a lot of cities there because when people are traveling up river, it's the point past which you can't go any farther because of all the rapids because of the topography change. So that's why you get a lot of cities in the fall line. All right, let's see if round five, question two goes better for you guys. Uh, category is crime doesn't pay. In a ruling that appeared bananas if you aren't up on your South American history, what company was ordered in June of 2024 to pay $38.3 million in damages to the families of eight Colombian men killed by the United Self-Defense Forces of Colombia? Uh, let's lock, because I, if, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're locked in. So do you want to go with some <laughs> banana company? 
like Chiquita? Yeah. yeah, I mean, this was just this was just something I was reading about, and I, yeah, I would go with Chiquita. And, All right. Yeah. I like the sound of that. Yeah. We'll say Chiquita. <laughs> It's bananas, and this is a banana story. So, Chiquita has always been in some other government's business. It started off as like the like United Fruit Company or something, and they were doing some dirty business in Guatemala. Hence why they had to change their name to Chiquita <laughs> in the 1990s. And then they just decided to get into Sucio business down there in Colombia. So we also went with Chiquita. So speaking of companies, it is Chiquita, but um, as far as companies that change their names to avoid bad press, I live in the headquarters of the Altria Company, which is a very friendly sounding nondescript name that used to be Philip Morris. Yeah. <laughs> Not great. But yeah, Chiquita. They yeah, they they got up to some stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. And oddly enough, Chiquita is also the name of Dane Dane's Vela's Chihuahua. <laughs> Hi Chiquita. It's a good name for a Chihuahua. <laughs> Round five, question three. I'm gonna advise you guys in advance, don't get too bogged down in the category. It's stupid. Category is crime still doesn't pay, but it may make you a US senator. Michael Majot and Brian Hartnell were the two survivors of attacks by what serial killer? Although he claimed to have killed 37 people around San Francisco, only those seven committed between 1968 and 1969 were confirmed to be him. <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, <laughs> let's lock it in. All right. All right. It was a funny lock in. Oh, he's yeah. so... Yeah. What you I, got? <laughs> so, I, I I know Aaron said don't get too bogged down in the name, but if I'm reading any kind of clue there, um, I know Zodiac was in San Francisco and people accused Ted Cruz of, or or no, don't accuse, but there's the whole conspiracy oh. about Ted Cruz and, and Zodiac. So mm -hmm. that leads me to Zodiac. I, uh, I, there's the other ones out in California, the Golden State Killer was, was mid-state area, right? East interior, um, yeah, I mean, the hillside strangler was, I think LA area and that was two people. So it's not, so son of Sam was New York, right? It, well, he was, he time. was in New York and Queens. Okay. Yeah. And I'm fine with Zodiac Killer. I like the Ted Cruz reference. Yeah. Yeah. I'll. I would, uh, I'd go with Zodiac and lock That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. The key and Andrew, what were y'all laughing at? <laughs> Raphael so Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew this right off the bat. I'm from the San Francisco area originally. The DC thing definitely linked it to Ted Cruz. I mean, that, that don't get bogged down clue gave me everything. So <laughs> yeah, Zodiac. Oh, wow. I didn't do that on purpose, but that would have been absolutely brilliant if I had. I just didn't want you guys to be like, you know, that's amazing. How is bogged down a clue? This is DC's a swamp. No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, Is that's. The swamp? Uh, yeah. The, the, yes, the swamp. No, I just. I didn't want you guys rocking your enormous trivia filled brains with like senators that had some actual connection to a serial killer because the connection here is the joke that Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer. And I would have accepted either because I always do when I ask questions for the answer is Ted Cruz is the Zodiac killer. Yay! After her, it's okay, I just love watching you laugh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Going into round six, we have a tie game at 135. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. We were doing so good. Oh, we're, we're still doing yeah. so good. We they just started are. doing better. We busted in just like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the episode title. <laughs> I can't have beep in yeah, the yeah, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just can you asterisk it out. Or poop emoji? Can you put emojis in the title? <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> Let's find out. Round six, question one. Category is, it was so big. How big was it? In 1908, 
The dining car superintendent of the Northern Pacific Railroad discovered that Washington farmers of what crop were struggling to sell their product because it was too large. A single one could weigh between two and five pounds and they were delicious when baked. So they became a signature item on the line. (laughs) That is so funny. I was complaining to myself because I'm the only one who listens about how good everybody else seems to be at food and drink questions and how bad I am at it. And I don't understand why, because I've eaten a lot. (laughs) Is that what you meant, Lisa? Yes. Okay. We're locked. Yeah, Lisa, I agree that a two pound potato would be big, but it is doable. I mean, I've had two pound potatoes. I've had a big potato before, you know, uh, Jason's Deli sells them down here. Huge. I I, I don't want to dismiss potato as a thing they grow in the Northwest that can grow between two to five pounds, but I don't necessarily think it's the right answer either. Yeah. I mean, people have been eating potatoes for a long time and I don't know that Remember 1908 too. That they would be struggling to sell them. Yeah, pumpkins Mm. are now baked. No, the only reason they said they were struggling to sell it is because it was too large. Yeah, but yeah, I don't think potatoes are that that big. Sweet potatoes maybe can get can get bigger or yams. What would somebody not want to buy because it was too large? Because you you don't have somewhere to keep it, or it goes bad. No, I'm not saying why. I'm saying what. I'm trying to. What would you not buy because it was too large? Thirty seconds. Or what They're not be- big on fruit, are they? This is going to be a vegetable. Cabbages are big. Cauliflowers are big. Maybe it is a sweet Maybe potato because it's, a- it's delicious when baked. Sweet potatoes Maybe. are really good when you bake Maybe. them. I know there are definitely bigger varieties. I'm okay with that answer. Yeah, yeah we, could, we could do that. All right, we're going to say sweet potato slash yam. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, we were hoping to having a lot of confidence in our answer. Yeah. Because Washington having really good apples and yeah. like a two to five pound apple is a big A apple, but it is delicious. Apples are delicious baked. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we got off on a tangent talking about other fun things. <laughs> <laughs> you seem but to be getting like, along quite well. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're just hoping that other team wasn't going to Jonathan into our answer that we just assumed was correct. But Aaron started talking about pumpkins. So now I'm worried. Mm. So, <laughs> so you guys have thrown me off. Oh, we said apples. Do. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. Oops. And we said Sorry. sweet potato you, slash yam. You did. You sure did. But you discussed pumpkin, which is why I Googled the average weight of a pumpkin. And since it's up, I'm going to tell you guys that it is 13 pounds. The average weight of an apple is approximately 0.33 pounds. Oh, good. Which means if a, 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 two, a two to five hundred apple would be way, Enormous. way too big. The size of an average potato is five to ten ounces. And a potato and a yam are different things. So the answer is potato. And I am not going to accept sweet potato. I felt like that was the answer, Lisa. Oh, Wait, what did what did you say the average size was? Five to ten. Two ounces. to five pounds. Huh. Oh, what? You just For said out loud. You just said it's five to ten ounces. Yeah. Which was oh, the, sorry. The average the average weight of one is five to ten ounces. The ones that were too big was two to five pounds. Two to five. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's Damn. in the north. It's in the northwest. It's right there near oh. Idaho, and it yep. felt like potato would be a good answer. Yep. Yeah. I forgot all about Idaho. I'm like, apples, Who ever man. remembers Idaho? It's like Kentucky. <laughs> Sorry to all the Idaho listeners. All right. Richard Nixon remembers Idaho. Because <laughs> he's looking down at it all the time. You know, the face that it makes where Montana meets Idaho. It's looking, yeah, that's Nixon. Anyway. Oh, well. You good? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Round six, uh, question two category is branding. Sometimes called swamp honey, what is the name given to the type of honey that comes from ogichi trees, ogichi trees, only found in the Florida panhandle and along the Florida-Georgia border, prized for its light sweetness and cinnamon and floral notes, and made popular by 1971 Van Morrison album. It's not a complete sentence on the back end there, but just roll with it. Apparently we hit the food and drink round that I'm terrible at. I will tell you the last one is not a food and drink question, so. Yay! (laughs) Ah! Ooh. Right? Yeah! 
Okay, we're going to lock in with that. All right, Lisa and Jonathan, talk it out. <laughs> All right, so Lisa, yeah, I mean, your first gut was Tupelo, and I agree there are songs about Tupelo, honey. Tupelo is a city in Mississippi, and so I wouldn't imagine this to be a Georgia-Florida border thing. Maybe it's named after those trees. <sighs> Doesn't feel right. I, I don't know. It's I'm I'm thinking the the Van Morrison song, and, and I'm really sure it's like she's as sweet as something something honey. And if it's not Tupelo, uh, it's something that has that kind of cadence. Yeah, I agree. Tupelo's in Mississippi. She said in the question and made popular by a 1971 Van Morrison album not song the album could have been named for the song i don't know yeah it could be trying to go through van morrison songs brown eyed girl mystic river mystic something no into the mystic you don't need an answer folks already fooey yeah i we gotta go to flow we don't have another yeah, answer i i just don't i'm not playing anything else we are we are resigned to submitting our answer of Tupelo, honey, okay. with a extreme lack of confidence. Andrew and Zakia, how confident were you guys? We were pretty confident. We went through a couple different types of honey, and then I started thinking more of Van Morrison, and it really hit me hard. Uh, I don't know if you all saw my face get all crazy. Uh, <laughs> it kind of normal to me. <laughs> you didn't Sean. see the this happen. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Your poor throat. I, I often do things like that at work in my office if I'm in where I just have an idea and like get all excited and <laughs> doesn't matter who sees me. But we went with Tupelo Honey. I added this song to a playlist I made for my wife when we were dating. And so thanks, you two, for matching our answer. <laughs> Well, I can't get, it's so, not bad for us either way, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> it is a town in Mississippi. It is also a town in Arkansas and Oklahoma. It is also, also a single by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and John Lee Hooker. And it is Tupelo. Wow. I'm glad I remembered that lyric correctly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the only kind of honey I know the name of. So I was going to suggest that as a give, give up answer regardless. But I felt like it had to be wrong. Nope. It was right. Beautiful. Also, that all of those informations came to you from the Wikipedia disambiguation page. <laughs> Round yeah. question three. Right, I love it. <laughs> disambiguation. <laughs> Round six, question three, category is trust me, I'm a doctor. In 1995, a British man named Ray Stantilli announced to the world that he had unique footage of what medical procedure. Although the procedure itself dates back to at least 3000 BCE in Egypt, and although this procedure is routinely recorded for academic or investigative purposes, news of this footage still made international news. You want to lock in that, Zakia? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Locky, locky, lock. So, Lisa, I especially like your answer because of the investigative purposes. Um, yeah, I, I'm thinking that this is going to be an autopsy and that this guy claimed his unique footage was perhaps the alien autopsy that, you know, they used to show on, you know, Fox and, and whatnot. The time frame seems right. You know, X-Files was hot and whatnot. So that's, that's my reasoning for that. Uh, I don't know what else might fit. Um, you know, I don't think, I, I'll just add, I don't think they were doing a lot of surgeries on live people, you know, that long ago. Um, which also leads me to <laughs> autopsy. Yeah, and particularly recorded for investigative purposes. Yeah. That is very that that is a thing that is recorded all the time for that reason. So I like that yeah. a lot for that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and lock that in. Okay. Cool. We'll lock in. Andrew and Zakia. I was almost a hundred percent on this right away <laughs> on being an alien autopsy. So that's what we locked in on. This was the man that claimed to have footage of the alien autopsy. Yay. Did he really? No, no. <laughs> I couldn't confirm nor deny. I mean, well, that's true. I, yeah. It's true. There's no way to know. After 
regulation. Teams are tied at 155. Bruh. <laughs> All right. All right. What's the gauntlet category, Aaron? Nicknames. Eee. Nicknames. Okay. I like it. All right, Aaron. Our wager is locked in. Love it. Zakia and Andrew. Uh, some more. Yeah, we are too. Our wager is locked in. First question in the gauntlet of nicknames. What nickname? Oh, this question comes to us from Stacy McPeak. Thanks, oh, thank you, Stacy. Stacy. Yeah. yeah. What nickname? originates from either the tendency to display leadership qualities like those of a sea captain or from a family name that passed over a generation. <laughs> uh, I really do. I think that's it. Okay. And I think that's the reason. Yeah. We'll lock that in. All right. Our answer is locked in. Okay. So are we. Okay. Number two. Thanks to urban revitalization efforts, Providence's nickname is Blank City. That's weird. I didn't know that they were undertaking efforts to surpass achievements of classical antiquity, nor that they were teaching underachieving students Hamlet. Fill in the blank. I love that you are just as expressive as I am, because when the light bulb goes off in your head, it's like, bazaza! I love it. <laughs> All right, y'all locked That's in? a bit of a mental explosion. Yeah, we're uh, locked in. Our answer is locked in. Question number three. For this, I need the first and last name of the person in question. In late 2018, one American singer, songwriter, and actor revealed that he is called Jiju by the Indian people, which means brother-in-law or sister's husband. Is that the Indian people as in Native Americans or Indian people as in India? People of India, because the indigenous people of America are, are Native Native Americans. I'm with you. I just wanted to be sure I was getting the right, the right yeah, understanding. Fair People from the Indian subcontinent. I, I'll explain. Our answer is locked in. <laughs> okay, we will lock in our answer. Love it. Back to number one. Tell me the nickname that originates from the tendency to display leadership qualities. Andrew and Zakia, what'd you guys say? Uh, we went back and forth, and I know Zakia didn't like what we locked in with, but the only thing I could think of was Master Mariner. So we went with Master. And then Master Dick Grayson from the old Batman show for names. So that's that's all I could get. Okay. Lisa and Jonathan? So I like this one. In Gilligan's Island, the nickname for the captain was what? <laughs> and if a name jumped a generation, perhaps that would be a skipper. So we said skipper. Andrew, you're feeling some feelings. You want to tell us what they are? I have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you gave him no, COVID, we're not Aaron. Laughing at that. We're not, <laughs> we're not laughing no, at I know. COVID. I'm very humorous. I'm a dark humorist. It's totally. <laughs> I'm self-deprecating in that way. If you've seen my <laughs> chips video on YouTube, no, I just. Yeah, that sounds like a lot better than our answer. We'll yeah. find out in a minute. It's all right. We're uh, going to have our time here. What is Providence's nickname, Lisa and Jonathan? What did you guys say? <laughs> Boy, we we were absolutely stumped by this question. Neither of us is proud of our answer, but we said to be city. To be or not to be. We said to be city. And because turnabout is fair play, Zaki and Andrew, what did you guys say? <laughs> <laughs> we we really went back and forth on this one, and I thought of Hamlet and antiquities as the Renaissance, and then Zakia was like, "But how does that link to teaching uh, slower people in class?" And I remembered the Danny DeVito movie Renaissance Man, where he took them to see Hamlet in Canada, and they all sang R O C K in the USA in the van, and uh, so we went with Renaissance Man. Renaissance Man City. Hey, Lisa, how are you feeling? So, Renaissance I'm City. I'm feeling a little disappointed. <laughs> right. I mean, I Let's wasn't getting on. it. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> what singer, songwriter, and actor is called Jiju by the people of the Indian subcontinent? Andrew and Zakiel, we'll start with you. 
Yeah, so Andrew is like, who's a sitar guy? <laughs> like Chopra? And I'm like, okay, no, no, no. Those are those are two different people. The sitar guy is Ravi Shankar. The sitar guy is or the the I think the Chopra you were thinking was Deepak. He's yeah. not a musician, but I'm glad you said Chopra because that made me think of Priyanka Chopra and made me think of her husband, who is Nick Jonas who has type 1 diabetes and is very precious in this household because of that. So we said Nick Jonas. Jonathan and Lisa? (laughs) Well, I started thinking about, you know, brother-in-law. So who would be married to someone from India? And I, I know, and I could not remember her name, and I went through every Indian actress I could think of, but I knew the husband. Right. And and I knew the husband was a Jonas brother. And I started out saying Joe Jonas and it kind of got stuck in my mind. And then as Jonathan was still talking and I was trying to relay who he's married to by a movie she was in last year with Sam Hewen and Celine Dion, I was like, no, no, it's Nick. So so right before we locked in, I changed and we locked in with Nick Jonas. Okay. I feel like we both meatloafed this. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. I'm going to start with one that y'all agreed on. Uh, it is Priyanka Chopra's husband, and it is the nickname of Nick Jonas. Ah, I get it. Yeah. We'll go back to the top. The nickname that originates from the tendency to display leadership qualities is, in fact, Skipper. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, efforts to surpass the achievements of classical classical antiquity. I cannot say it, but that is the Wikipedia definition of the Renaissance. Yeah. Provinces Renaissance City. And yeah, Renaissance Man was the the inspiration for the Hamlet thing. So you both got two out of three, which, you know, is respectable, but it means it comes down to wagers. Let's start with Andrew and Zakia. Tell us what you bet. I listened to Ben. <laughs> and so spent zero. <laughs> yeah, Andrew said that he had a theory. When like when there's a tie, we go all or nothing. And he said it's all about pride and glory. Like it, and then like, well, I have no pride and glory is nothing but a Matthew Broderick Denzel Washington movie to me. So <laughs> let's do zero point zero. I appreciate the decimal for clarity's sake. Jonathan and Lisa. <laughs> Well, we also, you know, felt we should go all or nothing and and go for go hopefully go for a tie, maybe do a little rock, paper, scissors. We were very confident in ourselves and bet it all. Oh no <laughs> We got shut out, Lisa. <laughs> we lost three hundred and ten to zero. <laughs> <laughs> If we could have just held on to a two-point lead, we would have won this game. 155 to zero, Jonathan. Your math is off again. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, arithmetic. Zero. Arithmetic. <laughs> 155 plus zero is clearly 310. You guys put y'all's bets in, and I was like, oh, there is opportunity for the best thing ever to happen, and it did happen, and I'm pretty psyched about it. This is what we won. <laughs> I think that's but relative. Does Jonathan's- <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think I was not the best thing ever. It could definitely have gone either way. Mm. Uh, final score 155 to zero. Your champions today are Andrew and Zakia. Oh, yeah. Good game. Good comeback. Good comeback. Woo! Team gesticulation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's... all right. Well, that was a fantastic game. Before we go, we'd like to give everybody a chance to do shout outs and promote causes that they care about. Andrew, you're on the winning team. We're going to start with you. Thanks, Jonathan. I just think everybody should still say stay. Think positive, test negative from the latest survivor. But yeah, I, I've got COVID now and I've actually been barely around anybody for the last two weeks and got it somehow. So I th- and I think I know where I got it, but it's crazy. So just be careful out there. Clean your hands, stay safe, stay healthy. Outstanding. We agree, and we hope you feel better soon. And Lisa, your turn. 
Uh, yeah, and help other people stay safe, go out and get Red Cross certified for CPR, save lives. Look uh, at the Red Cross website. You can find resources in your own community uh, that offer certifications. That's a really good one. I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. All right, guys. And that is going to wrap us up. Fantastic game. So for Andrew, for Lisa, for Zakia and Aaron, my name is Jonathan. This has been episode number 488, where it's not just trivia, it's war. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Trivial Warfare. Be sure to check out the revamped TrivialWarfare.com as your one-stop shop to submit questions, join the community, and get access to over 150 archived episodes. Warm It Up was written and performed by Matthew Stevens. This episode was edited and produced by me, Joel Sharpton. For help with your podcast, visit ProPodcastingServices.com.